I was born into a working class family. My father was a, an army sergeant and very tough. My mother worked in a carbon factory, standing all day every day folding carbon paper, which can't have been pleasant for her. They were extremely unhappy people. They were unhappy with each other and they were unhappy with us kids. There were six kids, two brothers and four sisters. My parents just didn't have time for that one child who was strange. So they would clip me around the ear or they would yell at me or they would sometimes my mother would had a great backhand. My mother's mother, my grandma Eliza, was a crazy person. Everyone knew Grandma Eliza was crazy. She was a voluntary patient in the local psychiatric hospital in the city of Leicester where I was born. Grandma Eliza heard voices and she behaved strangely. She died when I was six weeks old and as I was growing up, my mother saw in me the same traits that she'd seen in her own mother. She had presumed that her mother was crazy and an attention seeker. And so I was labeled the same. I struggled throughout my life and into my adulthood trying to be normal. I couldn't shut it off. It was not something that I could shut off. I would lie in my bed at night trembling and afraid and just praying and praying. Tonight it wouldn't happen. I would see the faces or hear the voices and I'd dive under the bedclothes, but they were still there. I was in my early 30s and by now my husband had gone. I was on my own, my daughter was 10 years old and the voices started coming stronger. You would call them visions, but I would say they were experiences, people you might call ghosts, but people who were to me just people. I knew that this was not normal and so I began to get very, very scared. I wasn't scared of the people in the spirit world coming to me, I was scared that people on this side, people on this earth would see me and somehow know that I was crazy. I was scared that my mother's prophecy would come true. I would be taken away in a straitjacket, but now my bigger fear was that they would take my child away from me. And suddenly it was like coming out of this dark nightmare tunnel and into the light, and I just realized that this was real, that this was in fact a gift, and I began working with it. People who we love, who have gone, are around us all the time when they need to be. Not every moment of every day, but whenever we need them, when they want to share a birthday with us or an anniversary, or we need guidance, they're there for us, and they want us to know it. People talk about reincarnation. I believe in reincarnation, but not in the ordinary sense of the word. Many people, when they talk about reincarnation, they say we live here, we die, we go up there for a while, however long it is, we come back, we enter another body, we stay for a while. That supposes that there is nowhere else to go but this earth. People do, when they die, have choices. They come back if they choose, but they have choices to go to other places too. A soul comes to this earth and chooses for itself the kind of learning and growth that it wants. Why don't we just have a big exercise here on giving the benefit of the doubt? Instead of judging instantly, why don't we just step back and take a moment to think maybe the universe in, in all its glory and its greatness and God in all his glory and his greatness, maybe they have a bigger plan that we don't know about. So who are we to judge?